Hello everyone, this is Mike. Welcome to my channel, Mike the Tech Savvy. This is a Samsung Galaxy S7 and today I will be reviewing the Lineage OS 18.1 build for the S7. I will show you how to install it and I'll also give you my honest opinion on it. Let's start off by showing you the prerequisites and some instructions on how to install it. I'll put this aside. It's pretty straightforward. Of course, you will need an Exynos based Samsung Galaxy S7 device. In my case, I have an international variant of the S7. This ROM is definitely not compatible with Snapdragon variants of the Samsung Galaxy S7. So I'll give you this right from the start. You will require some files, the ROM zip file, the latest TWRP installed as a custom recovery on your Samsung Galaxy S7. And we have here two optional packages, the NickG apps and the Magiscruit. Of course, given that uh, we're already in March, we can benefit from the Magiscruit 22, which is kind of amazing and which really is a game changer in uh, the routing aspect of ROMs in general. For all the files that you see here, you have download links in the video description. Right now, I am assuming that you already have the latest TWRP installed on your device. It's not complicated to install it. And I'm assuming if you're still using the Samsung Galaxy S7 as a daily driver, you're definitely running a custom ROM. So you do have TWRP. If that's the case, you will need to download the files on your PC and move them onto the Samsung Galaxy S7. I usually move them into the download folder after that's done, you should reboot into recovery. Of course, if you cannot reboot like this, you will need to reboot the old fashioned way. So turn off the device and then power it on by pressing the recovery key combo, volume up, power key and fingerprint scanner. Press the three of them, keep them pressed until this pops up. If you're on any ROM other than Lineage OS 18.1. So basically, if you're not on Android 11 or if you're coming from a different Android 11 custom ROM, I would recommend a full wipe beforehand. Therefore, make a full backup of your device. Then go into TWRP, Advanced Wipe. And here you should select Dolvik, System, Data and Cache. After you've selected these, you'll need to swipe to wipe. I won't be doing this because I've already done it, I've installed the ROM and everything is running perfectly. After you've wiped your device, you should go into install and you should go into the folder where you downloaded the files that I mentioned previously. As you can see, I have my ROM zip file, the Magisk root APK and the Nick G apps. The first step would be to install the ROM zip file, so select it swipe to confirm flash it will only take a couple of minutes once that's done if you want to have g apps on your device you will need to flash them right now so select the nick g apps and swipe to confirm flash just as a mention the nick g apps package is really really interesting it will allow you to basically replace the aosp apps directly with uh, the google apps and by this, I'm referring to the stock apps such as contacts, messaging, all other basic stuff. Of course, you can find just like with OpenG apps, different packages of different sizes with different apps already included. After you've flashed both of them, do not flash the Magisk. You should restart into system. And at this point, you should go through the setup wizard. You should set up your device, add your Google account and everything. Only after you've successfully booted the device, played with it for a while, connected to a Wi-Fi network and so forth, you should try installing the root. You will have to open a file manager app. I usually use Explore, but feel free to use whatever app you want. And in the download folder here, you will have the Magisk P22 APK, but it will look like this. So the link that I will give you will be a basic APK and in order to gain root access you will need to flash it in TWRP. You won't be able to flash an APK in TWRP so the method to do so is to rename it and add 
zip extension right now you can install it without any issues just like you install the other two packages so go back into twrp install select the magisk v22 zip file swipe to confirm flash and reboot the device you will be greeted by a device which has fully installed magisk which runs beautifully i'm not really sure if it passes safety net if it doesn't you can clearly add some modules to make it pass so you'll be able to use your banking applications as well without any problems the camera experience is not the best sometimes it freezes but i'm assuming this will be well improved in the following iterations but mostly it works just fine you can definitely see that we have a different interface it's not like the well very spartan interface that we had in the past with lineage os you have a lot of settings here very similar to what you normally get in open camera right now you get it straight here in the stock lineage os camera app you have some picture quality settings picture size settings picture format so you can take pictures in the high efficiency format and as far as the video goes you'll have the same settings so you can film in full hd you can choose the noise reduction settings stabilization and this is probably the electronic stabilization and again you can choose the video codec if you will take the second option here so h265 you will film in the high efficiency format and this will save a lot of internal memory and nowadays it's 2021 it's compatible with almost anything you definitely don't have any compatibility issues anymore audio codec really nice that you have a lot of choices here you can also try and install open camera if you don't like this but i quite fancy it you also have a pro mode where you can well play with the settings if you ask me this interface looks a little bit like the one we had with uh, windows devices in the past so when with windows phone devices such as the lumia 950 anyway the camera app looks really good after installing the nick gfs package you can definitely see that we do have here the packages from google so we have the google contacts we don't have the stock aosp contacts anymore the same goes for messaging for the phone app nick g apps is the recommended g apps option i'm not really sure if open g apps works it may work but i i saw it's not recommended i haven't tried it so if you want to try open g apps be aware of the fact that it might not work from a stability perspective the rom is well incredible very speedy i don't have anything to say negatively i have also tried going into geekbench and well giving it a run for its money just for curiosity's sake i'm not really a person that relies on benchmarks but why not let's just take a quick look as you can see right here in cpu we have these scores and if you go into single core here you can see the average score that an s7 should get and in our case 377 is even more than the s8 gets really impressive and in the multi-core again you have a higher score than the average samsung galaxy s7 not as high as an s8 but it's more than impressive in compute we have 1800 points more than average and somewhere in the galaxy s8 realm you can see here the score for the s9 so it's definitely lower for the s8 well i wouldn't really rely on this but i can tell you for a fact that it works really well i haven't noticed any important bugs the battery life is more than decent you do have all your typical lineage os tweaks and options here including the tap to wake tap to sleep wake on plug high touch sensitivity so it works with gloves i really believe that lineage os has grown a lot in the past couple of years and it's a really good alternative to stock roms i would choose lineage os anytime when comparing it to a stock rom if the lineage os build is as polished as this one you will definitely have an improved experience a much faster device a much lighter device and especially a much less bloated device which is becoming kind of a problem lately i'm not really sure if i reduce the animation developer options but yes i did 
I reduced it to 0.5 and I recommend you to do this with all your devices. You can definitely see that the ROM itself is very fast. I haven't actually played any games on it. It's not really my cup of tea to play games on, uh, on the phone, but you can see that the apps are switching really well and they remain in the RAM memory, even though this device only has four gigabytes of RAM. Another thing that I like is this screenshot button here. So you can take a screenshot directly from this menu and you can edit it here. Of course, this is not Android 12, so you cannot really add emojis or text to it, but still it's quite useful and very, very lightweight. You get this very nice Android 11 typical power off and advanced restart menu. I guess this is turned on in the developer options. As a final conclusion, I can tell you that this ROM feels much more mature than it actually is. It's only a few months old, but I feel that it's really stable. So it's definitely a daily driver material. It will of course be improved with the time. So I can only expect better things from it. So an increased stability, monthly updates and so forth. The developer for this ROM is Ivan Meller. He's the guy who usually deals with Samsung devices and Lineage OS. Again, this device is quite old right now and it's mind-boggling that you still can get the latest Android with the latest security patch level. Kind of incredible and it really keeps the S7 as a daily driver option in 2021. Battery-wise, the ROM is, well, as friendly as you make it. If you install a lot of apps that are draining your battery, it, you will get text. Otherwise, it's very battery-friendly. You get all the tweaks you want, given that you can install Magisk with so much ease. There's not much else to say. I will, uh, of course, link everything that I mentioned here in the video description below. As always, I'm warning you, please make sure you download the correct files for your device. And this is very important for the TWRP. Thank you so much for watching this video. This was a video review of the Lineage OS 18.1 on the Samsung Galaxy S7. If you like this video, please press the thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more similar videos in the future, also press the subscribe button, which will be displayed right here in the bottom left parts. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. There you'll also find the links to my social media and to my Patreon accounts. Thank you so much once again. This was Mike the Tech Savvy. Wish you a great day. Stay safe, guys. Bye.